Welcome to the Strategy Rewind Podcast. I am your host, Miguel LeBron. Here at the Strategy Rewind Podcast, we look at the relationship between goals, strategies, belief, and objective breakthrough. I'm so excited for today's episode. Hey, if we haven't met before, thank you for being connected here today. I am a father, a leader, an author, a strategy coach, and mentor, and I partner with individuals who have a goal but need a strategy. And in this podcast, we focus on the strategy to help you have a breakthrough moment. I believe in mentorship and I think mentorship is such a powerful thing. As a young individual, when I found a mentor that was able to help me, help me how to grow, how to become the person I wanted to be, how to gain the tactics and tools that were necessary, that's when I saw my life begin to change entirely. I saw myself in one lens, but when I began to work with my mentor, I began to see myself in a different lens. And over the years, I've had different mentors that I've worked with for different spans of time, focused on different parts of my life. But one of the things Things that I've seen is that when I have a mentor, I'm able to see myself in a different lens. I'm able to see myself in a bigger position or in a position in which I'd like to be. And so I believe in mentorship and mentorship is so powerful. Now, for some individuals, that may not be the traditional route. For some individuals, it may be just going to a community college and, and they're in a community college. You may have a counselor or you may have a teacher. Other individuals will go to college or go to university and that's okay. My point is that as long as you're doing the necessary things to invest in yourself, as Warren Buffett, I believe, that said that the biggest investment you could ever make is investing in yourself. And so your trajectory, your route may be distinct to everyone else's, but it's necessary to maintain focus on the end goal, on where it is that you want to be, what that end point looks like. And so when we talk about being able to get there from point A to point Z, we often forget the fact that it's not a one shot route, right? It's not going to be, well, you start here and you end there and that's the end of it. No, we understand that along the way, there are going to be hurdles, challenges, trials, tribulations, moments of loneliness, moments of sorrow, moments of rejoicing. There's going to be these highs and lows, these ebb and flows, mountains and valleys and everything in between. What we need to understand is that there are going to be moments within the journey where we are going to have to pivot. It's possible that the concept that you had of what greatness looks like begins to change. And so you begin to change the definition of greatness and you begin to move in another direction. Or maybe you were so self-centered, but then you realize the power of serving others. And so now you begin to shift your mindset. And of course, we know that position changes perspective. So along the way in your journey, the things you thought initially now begin to change. They begin to evolve. And now your goals begin to look differently. And so when we understand that, we understand then that there is a necessity to pivot. And oftentimes individuals, organizations are fearful of pivoting. They're fearful of calling an audible, of saying, okay, we have to make a change. This isn't working or I need to maneuver myself in a better position so that I can advance towards what the target is. Of course, in the game of basketball, it's so important for you to know your position, not just on the court for regards of spacing, of who's going to have the ball for offense, or when it's time to transition into defense. But even when you have the ball, there's a particular moment where if you have the ball, you have what's known as your pivot foot. And that foot allows you to still maneuver everything else, but you have to maintain that foot planted. It's called the pivot foot. And so the idea would be that even though I have this one foot planted, rather it would be your left foot or your right foot, I can still maneuver my body. I can still pivot so that I can find the best option within the offense or that I can ensure that I can pass the ball or whatever the move is I'm trying to do. But in order to have that explosion towards the, the rim or in order to be able to complete that pass, I need to be able to maneuver myself. And there goes the pivot. Those same rules apply to our life where oftentimes we're trying to get to the target. We're trying to get to where we intended to get to. However, if we're not pivoting, if we're not moving, if we're not adjusting to what's going on around us, then we'll find ourselves just simply, well, floating around and we'll find that life is happening to us as opposed to us 
having the control of what's happening. Let me talk to you about our show sponsors, United Marriage Encounter. United Marriage Encounter is a worldwide nonprofit organization dedicated to improving marriages by introducing powerful, practical, ongoing communication strategies. It's such a powerful experience, the weekends that they host for marriages. Early in our marriage, my wife and I went to a weekend, but the strategies that we received were so powerful, we decided to go again because the truth is that we can always keep growing growing and learning on how to better communicate. The weekends that they host are presented in a conference type setting, but after that initial meet and greet, no other group sharing is required. Each couple is given enough time to talk privately, freely, and be able to dedicate their entire time to their significant other. Head over to unitedmarriage.com. That's unitedmarriage.com where there you'll find more details on events that are coming up and may be happening in your neck of the woods. Andrew, thank you so much for being part of the program. Thanks for having me on. For those who aren't familiar with the amazing things you're doing, let them know about yourself. Sure. So I'm doing a lot. Uh, first and foremost, I got a, I got a wife and two daughters, and they're uh, definitely the focus of, uh, of my world. And professionally, what I do, uh, once upon a time, not that long ago, I was a personal trainer. Had done that for eight years. Before that, I was a salesman. So sales for a couple of years, transition careers, got into personal training, did that for eight years. And over the course of the pandemic, had to pivot, change gears quite a bit. Uh, living in New York State, had to physically shut down our in-person operations, which was an enormous hardship and, and brought with it all kinds of challenges. We pivoted to doing more online stuff, which is great. Uh, we were able to create tons of online content and help our people and more that way, which was a lot of fun. And through that whole process, uh, I ended up writing two books, creating a course, um, and also building a membership site with a bunch of um, workout videos for, for the members. So that was, I mean, there's a ton that we can pull apart there, tons to go into. But through that process, kind of got a little bit burned out on fitness, transitioned, uh, kind of jumped into the water of uh, wanting to be my own business, run my own shop. And uh, then the terror of jumping in all in and saying, um, okay, how do I feed myself now? Right? How do I, how do I put money, uh, you know, in the bank account and food on the table? Um, and so I've kind of struck a balance right now where I'm doing both. I'm doing um, a professional career where I'm working at my local chamber of commerce, and I'm also building a business on the side as well. And so for me, it's been a lot of fun in doing that. I get to do a lot of both worlds. I get to you know, have the, the steady income, but also the excitement of, uh, of a professional career. Uh, and then I get to kind of build something and create something of my own on the side. And I also launched a business podcast to go with the side work too. When we talk about having that work-life harmony, oftentimes individuals want that, right? You say, I have that harmony. I have that happening Individuals may feel some type of way right now, Andrew. <laughs> so what type of strategies could we provide for those who are looking to actually create that type of work-life harmony where they're hitting all gears? Sure. And I think, I think for me, what it comes down to is the numbing behaviors that I've used in the past have tended to draw me away from my best potential. Um, so alcohol was one of those things for me. So six years ago, I gave up alcohol. And another one for me has been video games. Honestly, it's, it's, they're fun. They're a blast. I've been a quote gamer for my whole life. Uh, you know, back when I you know had a handheld Game Boy, was playing on the, the original Nintendo uh, and, and all of that kind of has carried with me over time. But, you know, I look at the time invested in, in gaming and the time invested in alcohol and the time invested just in other general uh, behaviors that are just meant to quote zone out, you know, that are not really helpful. Um, they're fun in the moment, but they kind of left me feeling empty. Um, and so those two in particular, um, you know, I've, I've had to dial back on and reduce. And that's that's opened up time. That's opened up bandwidth. It's opened up opportunity. Um, and so I've, I've found that I tend to go through like a cycle, right? Where every maybe month or two, I'll get like real focused and real jazzed about something. Um, and I'll go all in, I'll spend tons of time on it. And my wife's like, Hey, make sure you spend some time with us. And I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, and then kind of, you know, pulls me back in, make sure I got my head on straight. Um, but then I'll, I'll kind of like either hit a road bump or just kind of get exhausted by it. And then I'll just kind of fall into like, just kind of general numbing behavior, whether it's TV, video games or whatever. And I found that if I just take away the numbing behaviors as an option, 
I have to be engaged. I have to be there for my family. I have to be focused on my work and I have to be focused on my side hustle. And so, you know, my encouragement would be for those that are looking to take their, their business to the next level, or if you're looking to start something or you're trying to get involved in something, identify those things that you know are nice to have, but maybe you don't have to have. Um, and, and get some of that on occasion. Um, but for me, I found that um, certain things, if I leave the door open, even a crack, I go all in. And so for me, I just keep the door closed. And that's just kind of the way that is. For individuals who want that harmony, right? They want to work it. Pivoting is the hardest part for some individuals, right? Making that jump, making that transition, or as some would say, the leap of faith of saying, I'm going to go all in and make this change. What strategies could we provide to them on making that transition? Sure. So for me, I did that same thing. I, I told my brother, I used to work with my brother in fitness. And I was like, listen, man, I, I got to strike out on my own. I got to do something. I'm like, you know, let's, let's start set up a timeline. So we had about three months or so that I was going to kind of offload my work onto uh, a new person that he was training up. And that three months went by faster than I thought it would. And, uh, you know, we got to a point where, you know, I kind of transitioned completely out of my personal training work. Uh, and then completely onto my own, and I didn't have enough work on my own to keep me busy. And so for me, strategically, I had to consider, okay, me, I don't have a family, I don't have kids, I can starve, right? I can live at my parents' house, I can eat, you know, peanut butter and jelly and, and make it, um, and I can start the business on my own, right? Um, but I also look at it as, you know, I've got a wife, I've got kids, I'd like them to be at least moderately comfortable. Uh, you know, I'd rather not move in my parents if I don't have to. Uh, and so, you know, the idea there is, okay, why don't I get something that's going to, let's cover all the bases, okay? let's, let's get, let's get something coming in on a regular basis. And then we'll look at also building something up on the side. Um, and my recommendation there is really strategically, it takes so much more work to build a brand and a reputation than you even realize. Um, you know, your first clients are probably going to be free in some way. Hopefully you can deliver some sort of a service and some sort of value in a free way. And I would start there, start there, just, just help, just be generous, be giving. Um, it's not going to be a forever thing. Um, what's going to happen though, is you're going to get some experience. You're going to get some testimonials and hopefully you're going to get some people that love to refer you and love to talk about you because the results they got were just so impressive. So that's how I got my first coaching client was I worked with a buddy of mine and I just kind of said, hey, you know, I'm looking to do this type of coaching. Is that sound interesting to you? And I'm, I'm looking to do it for free. You know, would you be my guinea pig? And he's like, sure, sounds awesome, right? So we, we did like a little six-week program. He absolutely loved it. And he was chatting with one of his guys that worked underneath them during that process. And this guy was like, kept asking him questions. He kept asking him more questions. Like, oh, how's that meeting with Andrew? And so, you know, eventually he was like, can I just hire you to work with my guy so you can do kind of the same stuff with him? I'm like, yeah, sure, you're right. And so that's how I got my first client. And so, so my recommendation to people strategically thinking, you know, if, if I'm going to start this business, find some people and help them. Who cares how much you get paid? Who cares if you get anything out of it? Really um, go into it with the idea of I'm going to help them with my skill. I'm going to help them with this thing that I'm going to turn into a business or this thing that I want to grow. And things can start to spiral from there. Okay. There's lots of different ways you can do that. You can do that on a one-on-one -on -one level. You can do like a beta group um, to kind of test stuff out with a, with a number of people. You can do whatever you want with it. But my recommendation is start small and see if it actually is the right thing. Um, and then let it grow. Let it grow from there. Because I think the biggest, the biggest challenge I think a lot of people are into is they'll start something like this, but they don't actually get their first client until two, three, four, five, six months in. They've done all this branding and all this research and all this other time and money and expenses. And you haven't found out if this service is useful. You haven't found out if people actually have a hunger for what you're trying to provide. And so if you can start satisfying some people's hunger in this particular area, you can prove the concept that you have, and then you start to grow that concept. For those individuals that are listening and loving what you're saying, they want to get connected with you, connected with your podcast, how could they do so? Sure. So I run the Build Your Business Better podcast. Um, so you can listen in on uh, anywhere, anywhere you can find podcasts. And probably the best way to get in touch with me is to connect on LinkedIn. Um, so I'll, I'll shoot you my info um, and then you can probably put that in the show notes. But Andrew Biernat, um, and you can find me on LinkedIn. Fantastic. Andrew, thank you so much for being part of the program. Hey, thank you, Miguel. This is a blast. 
Thank you so much for everyone who has been connected here today on Strategy Rewind Podcast. For more information on this podcast, head over to strategyrewind.com. Of course, I also want to thank today's guest and encourage you to head over to the show notes of this episode as you can find details on what they're doing and how you can connect with them. There in the show notes, you'll also find information on today's show sponsor, which is United Marriage Encounter. Remember, they have events going on all through the calendar year and even in your neck in the woods. Of course, if you'd like to be a sponsor of this podcast, head over to miguellebron.com. There you'll find details not only of how you can become a sponsor of this podcast, but also information on Miguel Lebron coaching. As always, please consider subscribing and sharing this podcast. And of course, surround yourself with people that will nourish your vision.